The first step to improving any aspect of your life is to recognize a, a shortfall, a problem, an issue, acknowledge an area of discontent. This is where most people get stuck uh, and don't even take that first step because it, it can be a pretty painful one, but at the same time, most of us kind of do it without even realizing through complaining. Some quick examples, like I'm not happy with my body, I'm not happy with my job, I'm not happy with my relationship. People complain about these things all the time, but when it comes to actually addressing them and thinking them through, possibly coming up with solutions, they cope, they fall back on convincing themselves, oh, it's not really a problem, or it's not that bad. So back to my examples, I'm not happy with my body, but I'm not morbidly obese and I don't have any health issues, so it's fine. I'm not happy with my job, but it pays the bills and I can't be bothered looking for something else. I'm not happy with my relationship, but putting up with the occasional fight is better than being single. And people do this because some of these are very difficult and confronting issues, especially because the way you view yourself the career that you have um, and the relationship with your partner, they form huge parts of your core identity. So to recognize that you're not happy with them is, is also acknowledging that you're not happy with yourself. You're, you're recognizing on some level that things aren't the way that you plan them out to be. You might have even failed in certain areas of your life. But that's also one of the most important lessons I want to impart because it's okay to fail. What's not okay is to be a failure. And there's a very distinct difference between those two because it comes down to a choice. You can fail a lot of times in something, but you can keep getting back up. You can choose to keep trying, keep persisting, keep going forward. And as long as we don't get knocked down and decide to stay down, like getting back up is one of the most rewarding things that you can do in life. It's only through failure and struggling and growing that's where we develop the most as human beings. So don't be afraid of it. What you should be afraid of is, is never trying, never succeeding in life. But usually what it boils down to first is taking that first step in acknowledging the issues beyond just complaining about it. Because for the majority of cases, complaining alone doesn't actually fix anything. It's, it's just a, a temporary like vent, a, a way to band-aid the situation, just make yourself feel better for a short amount of time. And what we do is we distract ourselves, which could be done through video games, through binge eating, social media, drinking alcohol, doing drugs, partying, any other bad habits you can think of. And I only know this because I've got first-hand experience uh, in several horrible jobs I've had in the past, mainly in retail, uh, customer service, and sales roles. And especially in the sales roles where you're cold calling people, where you're door knocking, uh, stopping people in shopping centers, like I did, <laughs> I did all of that. And 90% of your day involves getting rejected and people telling you no. And it wasn't like in a situation where you're selling expensive real estate or big industrial contracts where you don't mind going through the constant no's because one yes is, is enough to pay your entire month's salary. In my case, it was just that little 10% of yeses that you got meant that you could keep your job, meant that you could work another day <laughs> in the job that you didn't even like. So in these roles, I'd be constantly clock watching and just wishing the day would be over so that I could go home and do the things that I actually enjoyed. And more often than not, by the time I actually got home, I'd be so mentally drained and beat up that all I wanted to do was drink alcohol and play video games. By the time I actually felt good about life again, it would be time to go to bed and to do it all again the next day. And this went on and on for months. And it's not as if I could simply find another job because I didn't go to university straight out of high school. So I was only really qualified to do this type of job. So this cycle not only put a strain on my relationship, um, it was highly damaging to my physical health, my mental health, um, and led to an overall feeling of just being trapped in my own life. And it wasn't until I stopped burying my head in the sand. I, I stopped trying to distract myself with, with bad habits that I could actually start to look at long-term solutions to this problem. And sometimes it even requires like a, a push from an outside source to finally get you to look inward and admit to your flaws, to confront a lot of ugly truths about yourself and 
admit that you've made some really poor decisions. And for me, that push came from my girlfriend at the time who, uh, luckily enough for me, is now my wife. She was nothing short of amazing for putting up with me uh, during that difficult time. And she would even pay for all of our dates for, for an extended period. She even gave me money for rent uh, one time because I had like literally no money in my bank account. And that was honestly one of the lowest points in my life. I'd never felt more emasculated. I'd never felt more pathetic. I'd never felt more like I didn't have my life together at that point. But the other key thing I remember feeling from that time is, oh, there's, there's a few. One, I don't deserve this girl. Two, I should marry this girl. And three, if she says yes, I should spend every day of my life trying to be the man that she actually deserves. And maybe you don't have that special someone in your corner like I did, but that's exactly why I wanted to come back and restart this channel. I, I want to be able to create that community for people um, struggling with these sort of issues uh, and give them the motivation. So if you can't get it from you know, friends, family, loved ones, you can get it here. Because you need to know that as terrible as it feels to admit that you've failed in some capacity, once you embrace it, the discontent, it becomes fuel to help you improve. It enables you to make these scary decisions and take the necessary steps forward to fix your situation. But it all comes with identifying and acknowledging the problems. And for your sake, I hope you can do it before it's too late, before it becomes too big of a problem. It would have been so easy at the time for my wife to just leave me and move on to someone better. Um, so I was so incredibly lucky from that perspective, but there's a lot of people who don't get so lucky. There are a lot of people who make mistakes, not even as dearly as the ones I made, but who get punished way more in proportion for them. And yeah, there's just situations in your life beyond your control where you end up in these terrible circumstances and it's not entirely your fault. Regardless of how you ended up in that situation, complacency isn't the answer. Complacency is not what's gonna get you out of it and move you forward. Because here's the truth, most of these issues, 99% of them, will not go away on their own. You need to put a plan in place. You need to take action on that plan. But it all comes back to taking that first single step, which is claiming responsibility and admitting there's a problem. Once you've done that, you can move on to the next step, which I'll discuss in my next video. Until then, anyone who's watching, I want you to think about your own life for a few minutes. Don't just click onto another video and chase more dopamine hits. Maybe you're on YouTube right now wasting time because you're trying to distract yourself from something or trying to procrastinate. Stop, put the phone away, the laptop, tablet, however you're watching this, set it aside and ask yourself, what is one thing in your life that you're unhappy about, that you're discontent with? And not something that you can't control, like who the president is, who the prime minister is, or people are stupid on the internet. Something meaningful, something personal to you that you think and know that you should be better in. I already discussed three examples earlier, uh, that being your job, your body, your relationship. It could also be the relationship you have with your family, your friends. Do you need to make more friends? Could it be study related? Are you, are you not getting the grades that you know you can get? Do you already have a bad habit or addiction that you're struggling with? Whatever it is, don't wait until it becomes a bigger issue down the road. Like if you're obese, don't wait until you have a heart attack before deciding to lose some weight. If you have a gambling problem, don't wait until you lost your life savings and you have to sell your family home before thinking enough's enough. And if you're having relationship problems, don't wait until your partner says those dreaded words of, I'm falling out of love with you before deciding to fix it. The main lesson is don't set your future self up for failure by saddling yourself with a greater burden that you can handle when right now you can take steps to making it better. Either way, you're going to end up sacrificing. You can sacrifice the quality of your future by putting up with the current situation or you can sacrifice some time and effort now to increase the quality of your future. Embrace your discontent in life and weaponize it to be the person you know you can be. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.